So you can see, you can begin to imagine the trauma, the suffering by the Kenyan people and this nation. As we speak, we have a nation that is deeply troubled, deeply insecure. I don't think there's any Kenyan who is feeling happy today. I don't even think William Ruto himself is feeling happy because of the shock to be was. Because as a parent, as a parent, how would he, how does he wake up every morning and imagine what happened? And yet, not a word <laughs> since the happenings on Tuesday from the so-called government spokesperson. Not a word from Inspector General of Kenya Police or the commandant here, the infamous Bungay. I'm speaking after the president of the Law Society, Pedro Diambo, and I don't know what she told you. But in my view as senior counsel, we're going to document every case, perhaps even revisit the International Criminal Court, and, and this time talk to them about the atrocities committed against the Kenyan people by a regime which is heartless, which calls his own citizens traitors, I mean, to the committing treasonous, what was it, treasonous acts. And we are yet to be told who are the financiers of this very organic youth movement, organic, in their thousands, and they just want to claim their country back. This is not the country our forefathers fought for. And I want to look at William Ruto in the face, I hope he's looking at me, and tell him to rise above himself and realize he has instruments of power and order the, the stoppage of killing of young Kenyans. Mm. It is obvious he must have given the direction, the directive, shoot to kill. Because those snipers would not have blown up the young brain we saw at the mortuary the other day. He's one of the two, two people who arrived here dead on arrival because his brains were blown off. So this cannot continue. In a democracy, it cannot continue. And by the way, I want to ask William, is this a democracy or a military dictatorship?